Hello, my name is Ryan, and I have made a 3D printed snowblower over the last month. I designed all the files in CAD and then had them all printed out on my DaVinci 1.0 3D printer. And it works quite well, actually. I'm going to be selling them as a kit, and I'm going to be selling the STL files separately. Um, well, if you buy a kit, I'll also include the STL files so you can have replacements printed and stuff like that. But the whole thing is designed to fit on a Kyosho Blizzard. And on mine, I actually modified my Blizzard to face backwards, basically. When you buy it from the store, it comes this way, you know. And it's pretty easy. You just need to cut the... F um, do some little work, like cutting some stuff. Like I drilled some holes here to fit a custom mount and stuff like that. And I put my own custom clip coming out of this plastic cover to clip the body on right there. It's pretty simple to do. But the, the kit when you buy it will come with this mount and it's designed, it has several pieces that fit right into the stock. This is the Kyosho Blizzard SR. That's the newer model. I'm not sh I, I doubt this will fit the old DX models. But this one comes ready to bolt in. All the bolt holes line up to the side here. And it's mirrored, actually. So you can, you can either have two servos lift, raise, and lower the snowblower. Or you could use one really strong one like I have here. But the mounts, you can put two in if you need. Or you can use the other mount, like I use sticky tape for the, the ESC that controls it. And all this stuff's 3D printed. It's pretty strong. As you can see, the mount holds up the weight of the snowblower pretty well. And it's, it's pretty sturdy. People think 3D printed stuff is weak, which it can be, but it depends on how you actually print it. Like this is printed on the, the flat plane, so it's all, all really strong. But the actual mount is designed to easily detach. All there is is two screws, so you could do this while you're out running it on the field. All you need is a screwdriver. And then, simply slide out. Got to disconnect the layers though. And once you have the snowblower disconnected, it's actually a really compact little holder that doesn't affect your driving performance. You can still you can still go off roading like that. And the mount you can see it's just a simple control rod that raises and lowers that. And there's um, grooves on each side that these pop into. And then it only needs one screw on each side to hold it. So it's pretty simple. I'm also going to be including an option to buy a blank mount so you can mount it to like a remote control truck and you, you'll have to cut it yourself and pretty much handle the whole mount on your own but that'll be available a, a little cheaper too if you get the mount with the blizzard it'll be a little more expensive because there's quite a few pieces for that but yeah here's the actual snowblower it's, it's fairly light the front end is light but the back is pretty thick with all the, the motor and servo and all the gears and everything in there but it works very well I haven't had too much snow to test it yet but once it does, I'll make a lot more videos. But basically, you have to modify a servo to run 360 continuous because it's geared down, which is pretty easy to do. There's plenty of tutorials online for that. And then the motor, there is enough space to fit pretty much any motor you could want in here. I just have a stock 540 from Tamiya. And yeah, it it's pretty much bolt together, like the side ends just have bolts that connect this curved piece, which has printed supports to keep the front straight, and then you bolt together the center. And you can see I'm holding it from the nozzle, 
3D printing is, the way I designed it, it's pretty damn strong. And the belt cover has four bolts, keeps everything pretty strong. Um, see, the impeller is also 3D printed. It's, it held up to that ice in that ice video I showed you. And running through the auger is a threaded rod that keeps it really nice and strong. So I don't think there will ever be any issues with that. And currently all my gears are printed in ABS plastic, which held up against the ice. But I'm going to be printing them for the final kit in nylon plastic, so they will be significantly stronger. And, um, yeah, I don't have any price yet for the kit, but I'll post that below in the video once I get that decided. And, um, yeah, let me know of any questions you guys have on the video. Actually, let me quick show you it running. Let me get this. Put it back on here. You just uh, slide those clips back in place and put in two screws. This might take a little while, but it's the best design that I could come up with. Anything not using screws just didn't have enough strength to support the snowblower while it would be, you know, plowing through snow. So then I have all my wires on connectors so I can connect them and disconnect them. And for mine I'm running a modified um, 9X radio. I got it on Hobby King. They're very well they're very nice. I put a Smarty Parts board inside of it and it's very customizable. That's what I use on all my RC stuff. I also use the um, voltage meters from Hobby King. Very cheap, really nice clear display on how much battery you got left. Yeah, from the radio with that uh, continuous servo you got left and right and it, c it can actually blow the snow behind the machine. And then, the actual lifting of it, it takes a pretty strong servo to do it with one servo. This one I believe is, I think, 10 kg rating. But, as you can see, the uh, flipping the Kyosho around, you have the weight of the motors that keeps it pretty balanced. Well, there's a, a little bit of weight on the front. I have modified some of the drivetrain. I'll show you pictures of that in the actual kit of how to do that. But as you can see, it tilting it up makes it really easy to drive and maneuver. And when it's down, you have you know, less performance, but it goes pretty good to great. And then the actual snowboard part. speed controller just so I can kind of fine-tune it while I'm out there and figure out what what speeds are good but you could also run this just on a direct on and off switch like some people do instead of using ESC but it, it does have some volume to it but I think that's just mainly 
all the moving parts. But yeah, I can't wait to get snow, or more snow, and actually test it out properly. So yeah, I think that wraps it up. Um, let me know any questions you guys have, or thoughts on it, or design tweaks and stuff like that. So thanks for watching, and check out the links below to check out when I actually start selling it. So thanks.